Hi, this is Hussein, and welcome back to the fourth session of modernizing application with Azure and Kubernetes. In this session, we are going to create Azure Kubernetes service and the container registry. I will start this off giving some high-level architectural overview of the Azure services that we need, and then we'll get into the demo. So, we need to create an Azure Container Registry to store our uh, Docker images. Also, we need to spin up an AKS cluster to deploy our application and run it. AKS needs to pull images from the Container Registry. However, before this can happen, an authentication mechanism should be established between the two services. What we'll do here is we'll create an Azure Active Directory service principle. A service principle provides access to Azure resources within your subscription. Think of it as a user identity that AKS can use to authenticate itself against the Azure Container Registry so it can interact with it. So we will configure the service principle with the necessary right to access the ACR. In our situation, it will give it access to Azure Container Registry to pull the Docker images. Then AKS will use the service principle credentials to access the container registry. Now, let's get into the demo. I have here Azure portal opened. I am going to use the Azure Cloud Shell in order to deploy my application. First of all, you need to clone the repo. I have already cloned the repo, and if you see here, I have the K8 product store code inside my cloud drive. I will navigate to the folder where I, can have, where I have my uh, Azure scripts. So I have Azure CL scripts inside this folder. I can see it now. I need to execute that file I'm using bash for this purpose. And then I will specify that file. So what's happening right now is it's, it's executing the Azure CLI scripts that I've created. This will take some time. So I will move back to the Visual Studio code in order to explain what I'm doing right here. So inside the project application, you will see an Azure CLI scripts folder and inside it, you will have the bash file that contains all the CLI commands that you need. First of all, I'm creating the variables that I need to use in, all, in the next subsequent commands. So a resource group, the ACR name, the ACAS cluster name, the service principle name, and the location where I want to provision my resources. Then I'm creating the Azure uh, resource group specifying the resource group name and the region where it should exist. After that, I'm creating Azure Container ACR. I'm, I'm using Azure ACR, ACR create command with those parameters, the name I want for my registry, and, not, and, not, and, and you have to uh, consider that this should be globally unique. And then I'm specifying the resource group that I have just created in the previous command where the registry will be placed. Location is a location that I have chosen previously for the resource group. And here we need to specify the service tier for your Azure Container Registry. The basic tier is fine for me. Like there are other service tier which kind gives you like some extra storage or J replication or other capability. But for the purpose of application, the basic tier will be fine for us. In the next step, I'm getting the ACR, uh, ACR IDs that I have created in the previous command. I'm storing it in the variable right uh, ACR registry ID. So as we said previously, services inside Azure need permissions so they can talk with each other. In our case, the AKS cluster once provisioned need to pull images from the container itself. So here I'm starting to create the service principle and then I'm specifying the name of the service principle and take into consideration that the service principle name need to start with HTTP and then I'm specifying the scopes I'm passing here the, uh, the ACR ID which we've got previously from the previous statement then we specify the role of the service principle which defines the permissions that the service principle has on the resource itself we're actually also querying for the password because we need the password and the uh, application ID here in the next subsequent commands. So after I get the, uh, serv the service principal password, I'm asking for the principal pa application ID and storing it in this variable. 
Finally, once I have my service principal application ID and my application and service principal password, I start spinning up and provisioning my Azure Kubernetes cluster. I'm using AZ AKS create command specifying the cluster name, the resource group, and the region. Here I'm also specifying the count, uh, the, the count of the nodes in my cluster, uh, putting it as one. Uh, by default, uh, Kubernetes will spin up three nodes in your cluster, but uh, I need just one node, so that's why I'm specifying the count, uh, the count of the nodes. Also, uh, by default, the cluster will use virtual machine skill set instead of individual virtual machines. So VM skill sets are required for scenarios including auto scaling and multiple node pools, which kind of more advanced that we don't need it here. So I'm setting the VM set type to availability sets. I'm also passing in the service principal application ID that I get from a previous command. I'm also passing the service principal password as a client secret. So AKS eventually can use that service principal to pull resources and add images uh, from a, uh, Azure Container Registry as we see in the next sessions. So I went back to my Azure portal and as you can see here in uh, the Azure Cloud Shell, after executing each one of the Azure CLI comments, you kind of have an output that indicates if the operation was successful or uh, there is some failure. And as you see, uh, all my Azure CLI commands was uh, successful. So here we created the Azure Container Registry and then the service principle. And here you can find the output uh, for the AKS cluster. Um, I, can, I have uh, one node, as we said, and this is a kind of description of the, um, uh, like the specs of the AKS cluster. So let's see now uh, our resources. I am going to navigate to product store resource groups that I have created, and this is the uh, Kubernetes uh, cluster dashboard. As you can see here, the status is uh, fine, we're good. And if I need to navigate to node pools, you can see here the uh, node counts and the standard size that we have specified once we create this cluster. Let's go back to see the container registry. The container registry is here and everything is uh, fine. And we're ready to deploy our application. Uh, now I'm gonna show you how to create uh, those uh, two resources, container registry, and Kubernetes service from the portal. Uh, you have to click in the create resource, uh, go to containers and select container registry. And then here in the basic uh, uh, in the basic tab, you have to enter uh, the values like resource group, you specify the resource group and uh, your registry name. Uh, so the registry name uh, should be unique. Also, you specify the location of your um, where you want to put uh, the container registry. Uh, if you need to enable or disable admin user and the SKU, as we said, we're gonna stick with basic because it's cost optimized option for developers which are uh, learning a uh, container registry as we're doing here. I'm gonna stick with the default values. I'm gonna go and click review create after uh, validation pass. You can go ahead and create and, and hit the create button and you will and uh, container registry will be provisioned for you. Now let's see how we can create uh, the AKS cluster. Same, we're gonna go to containers, uh, select Kubernetes service. Here in the first place, first page, the basic page, uh, there is a project details. You select the resource group and the cluster name. Then you specify the region, the Kubernetes version that you need to install in your uh, node and the, in your uh, Kubernetes master and Kubernetes nodes. And then you specify the node size. As you see, this is the size is not available uh, because um, it's not available in my subscription because I'm choosing uh, a region here so I'm gonna choose East US and uh, the node size is available in East US which is good so here you can change the size of uh, your virtual machine and uh, depending on the workloads that you have to run I can change it to BS2 and then select and also have you have to specify uh, the now the node count in your uh, node pool so I'm um, you can increase it or decrease it I'm going to decrease it to one and go to the next uh, uh, step, which is scaling. You have different options, virtual nodes or virtual machine scale set. 
I'm gonna stick with the default here and go to the authentication page where we, you can configure a service principle. So if you leave uh, uh, this as uh, as the new default service principle, uh, a service principle will be created to you, or you can choose uh, configure service principle to use an existing one. In this situation, you have to provide service principle client ID and password. For also for fine grade access control over your resources in or Kubernetes resources in your cluster, you can choose uh, to enable this option, enable RBAC. The next step is networking. Uh, you have also a couple of options here. So if you have existing uh, virtual network, you can add your cluster to uh, this uh, virtual network by uh, checking uh, advanced and specifying the virtual network here. And then finally, uh, monitoring, which by default is enabled uh, uh, for uh, uh, Azure Kubernetes cluster. Let's keep it. Let's now choose no because uh, in the next uh, session we will see how we can enable Azure con Container Monitoring and talk about this more in depth. Anyway, I'm not going to create uh, the cluster. I'm just showing you how to use that in the Azure portal. Once you're done, you click Review and Create, and once the validation pass, you can click on the Create button, and you will and you will start provisioning your cluster. So uh, that was uh, all of it for uh, this session. See you on the next session where we will be talking about um, deploying your application into AKS.